Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today I'm going to be retaking a look at encrypted values. And the reason being, I get a lot of questions in regards to that. The most common that I get is I get asked a lot, say, so, well, uh, I'm looking up these different values and everything and I find them exact value there they are I go in there and change them and boom nothing's changing in the system they're staying the exact same value and the first thing out of out of my mouth I said well more than likely you did not find the internal code you found a display code or a graphical code or some other code that is not the internal code and I've already done a lesson on graphical codes versus internal, excuse me, internal codes versus graphical codes. And I will link that up in the upper right hand corner and you can go take a look at it. And in that video, I show you where the internal code does not necessarily have to be in sync with the graphical code. And the graphical code, display code, same thing is what you see on your screen. It shows the number or it shows a bar or whatever. And a lot of times you'll find values associated with that that has nothing to do with the display, but it still is not the internal code. So, And the next thing out of my mouth would be like, well, have you tried a different value type? Or have you, or it could be encrypted. Have you tried a looser search, like changed and unchanged, you know? And if it's encrypted, uh, going increase, decrease uh, is not going to work for you because encrypted values, they just jump all over the place. So... I've already looked at encrypted values once and I gave a full rundown based off Jerry's Tut, a, a moderator from the Cheat Engine website. And I also did another vid in regards to encrypted values in Canyon Lynch 2 and I just lightly touched on it on that. I just went directly in there to find the value and this, that and the other. But this time I want to do it in Hitman 2 to show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to look it up via exact value. Then we're going to look it up via the internal code. The internal code is heavily encrypted and the display value shows the actual number, but it does nothing to change the value of our ammunition. And what we're going to do is when we find the internal code, we're going to backtrace a little bit and we're going to find where it's being encrypted at. So I'm going to show you how to do that also. All right, so stick around. Let me go ahead and bring everything up and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I got Hitman loaded up and let me go ahead and attach Cheat Engine to the game. Load associated. I'm not going to load my associated table at this point in time. I've already got a lot of codes for it already, but I'm just going to show you what we do and what we go through to get encrypted values <clears throat> so let's go offline you always want to do any kind of game hacking in offline mode I don't care what game it is uh, I don't recommend ever doing anything in online mode do it in offline mode that way you know you will never be dealing with server-sided values in offline mode okay so let's go I'm just gonna go to the beginning of the game like to the uh, training area that way we can be left alone a little bit. And let's go ahead and play. And I'm just going to go off to an area just so we can be left alone and, and see if we can find this value here. And there's no easy way to find encrypted values. I wish there were, there just isn't. You're going to have to use changed and unchanged. And that's the only way you're going to get close to finding it. And it's still a pain after that. I want you to know right now, you will crash your game, you'll get mad, you'll start cussing a lot. You might even pick up smoking or something. <laughs> but uh, that's how it's got to be done. So what we do in this case, we're just going to do a new scan. We're going to go unknown initial value search. And we're going to pause the game while we scan. This is a 64-bit game, so just kind of... Take, a, take it a little more easy on the RAM. We'll pause while it scans so it's not having to constantly read this game while it's scanning. So Let's go ahead and do that and do a first scan. And it's going to bring up every 4 byte value in the game period. So we know our ammo, our internal code is going to be in there somewhere, but will we find it? Now I'll show you how to easily get to it using changed and unchanged. I find don't let your chamber value run completely out. If you let it run completely out and it re it, it'll hit a compare or some type of condition and then it'll automatically reload. 
what I suggest you do is go down a little bit, then manually reload yourself. You'll weed them, for some reason, that seems to weed them down a lot quicker than just going all the way to zero, starting back over, and then just going down. So let me go ahead and pause this while it's doing that. I want it to finish its scan process. I don't want to uh, keep that going. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause it, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so as you can see over here, we got almost a billion uh, addresses. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Almost a billion addresses in the 4-byte value. So that's every 4-byte value in this particular game. Okay, <laughs> so let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and weed some of these down. Now, like I said earlier, I'm using hotkeys. And just let me show you. Click on edit settings. Come over here to hotkeys. And the only four I really use, because I use these the most, is increased, decreased. And all this is in the next scan area. And I use changed and unchanged. Those are the only four I, I usually set to hotkeys. Now, you may have a different technique or whatever. doesn't really matter. Whatever's easy and convenient for you. But those are the four that you're really going to be using the most when value hunting and I, I really recommend at least setting these four to hotkeys and be, being encrypted values it's just going to jump all over the place it doesn't increase or decrease it could be anything so we can only use change and unchange and that's what we're going to use so let's go ahead and get started we've got our guy here so let's go ahead and fire off a round and we see the value has changed so we go back here and I'm going to hit my Hot key for change value, let it do its scan. I'm going to stay on top of the RAM. And there we go. So we're down to 23 million results. And you'll see we can weed these down rather quickly. So let's just kind of walk around and just do all kind of different things. Uh, change the camera angles. Get rid of any camera values or any, any other kind of graphical values that may be in there. That is not related to what we're looking for. And that'll help weed them down. We're already down about 8 million, so that's really, really good. Now 6 million. So anything you can do that it may be keeping up with, it really helps the weeding out process. So that's what we'll do. And we're down about four million, so let's go ahead and fire off another round. We're down to five, changed, we're down to a million. Let's walk around while it's doing that. And let's just keep going with it. You wanna weed them down to about as little as possible. Alright, what I like to do here, instead of getting all the way to zero and letting it reload automatically, is I like to manually reload. Uh, and that will change the value and that'll, that'll help weed them down quicker. So let's reload. Change to seven. We're going to hit changed. And anything unchanged. You look, take a look at this. We're about down to 154 now. So it's weeding out great. Just kind of shift the camera around a little bit more. We're down to 98. Let's see if we maybe can get it down a little bit more. Down to 51, 49. That's really, really good. Don't fire. Now we're down about 45. That, that's not bad at all. What I want to show you also is I want you to take a look at these addresses. And when you go to look for flag values, encrypted values, like I was stating earlier, you're going to crash your game a lot. And it's really hard to pick up where you left off because you don't know because these all these addresses are going to change. But, but I want to show you one thing. I want you to take a look at the endings of these addresses. I want you to first note anything that may be just a four byte address. We see that this is a six byte address. One, two, three, four. Well, it's not really a six byte. It's like <laughs> four and a half, I guess. <laughs> but you know, it's a bigger address than the rest. And First of all, notice those type things, because those things will remain the same. The numbers will change, the hex values will change, however, usually these ending values will not, because they correlate with an offset. That offset will always be the same. The registry plus the offset will equal the address, or whatever's writing to it, reading to it, whatever, wherever it's being stored at. <clears throat> so the patterns you should be looking for is you see zero 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 and eight for the little addresses and then when you start hitting into the big addresses you got eight 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 zero 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 eight do you see where i'm going with this and just goes on down and on down 
and you can kind of pick up where you left off if you kind of keep that in mind I, you can take a screen print of it and you if you can weed it down to like 41 again or 40 35 you'll start seeing the same exact type patterns and you can kind of pick up where you left off and you know when we go down and try the eights and the zeros we're going to eventually we're going to hit that eight or this eight and it's going to crash the game so from previous experience now we know this already to be our graphical code see it ending in six our value ends in six off around and you see it goes to five didn't really weed any more out that's fine so to save us a little time and save us crashing down well actually that might be a good idea as a, as a learning tool I just don't want the vid to be too too long but it may be long anyway is I, I'm going to intentionally crash it like we're just trying a random value so I'm going to pick a couple of these values that maybe have crashed it for me in the past and we're trying values and we don't know where it's set but we know we tried these eight values right here ending in uh, A8 C8 and this D8 right here so we know the eights okay so we'll just say we was down here in the middle of the list. We went by our patterns. But I, what I want you to see is this right here. Notice the patterns. 888-000-8080804. Things like that I want you to remember. I'm going to take a screen print of it. Let me bring my paint up. This will help you kind of pick up where you left off so you're not just recrashing the game retrying the same address that you or not really the same address but retrying the same type value that will crash your game anything that you can kind of weed out to help you with that my computer's really running slow because i got the recorder going as well as the game and cheat engine on top of it so bear with me just a second here i don't even know why i went and did that i have it saved down here on the pin address let's just go ahead and uh, paste that in there now we got kind of a correlation that I want to show you and that didn't really yeah that's it okay so we're going to intentionally crash the game now so let's see if it does so we do that so we know those what knit and the game did not crash so we can go ahead and say change value and we're down to 37 and we're looking for any kind of change whatsoever and I thought that would actually crash it down it didn't so because usually an 8 crashes my game something fierce uh, so let's try a few more 8's let's just try all these 8's everything ending in 8 when we hit an incorrect value and boom that's what happens look for encrypted values alright we hit a value we shouldn't have messed with but we kind of take a mental note before we let the game go because all these are going to disappear but remember our patterns and what we tried what we didn't try and we're just looking at the ending of the addresses okay so I'm going to bring this back up I'm going to go ahead and get back down to about 40 or wherever we was and then I'm going to come back to you okay okay we're back and I went ahead and brought the game back up and I spared you having to refine the or we down the process again so uh, basically what I want you to take a look at now this is the second time through and I weeded it down to about 39 and we're going to bring up the screen print we took last time I don't know if you can see that or not but I'll get a close up of it and what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at similarities in these things okay and you can see here if you look we're looking at the endings and usually these things are only going to end in 0, 4, 8 and C 4 bytes apart okay based off the offsets now sometimes there'll be an oddball in there here and there but uh, mostly that's what you're going to do so what I recommend doing when you're looking up these encrypted values or flag values and uh, you really don't know what you're looking for and if you hit the wrong value the game crashes the best way to keep up with it well go through and do things that are the less of all of them you see you got a bunch of zeros a bunch of eights but you only got a few fours you see that do the do the ones ending in fours or something like that whatever's less do those first and then go to eights you remember last time we tried the eights but I did that on purpose to show you that we crashed down 
you know, to help pick up where we left off. But we're going to look for significant values, and we got lucky in this one because this is our display code. We're at five, and if we go to modify that, it's not going to do anything because our internal code is encrypted. But it's also a good point where we can evaluate where we left off to. We can see originally here. Here's five again. That was our display code the last time, and it's always going to keep up with whatever our display is. And we know we tried those eights right before then, the last time. So any of the eights before then are probably not going to work because you can see right before then we tried every single eight before we hit that display value. And anything that's in there now you know is not right because the first time they were weeded out. So use the process of elimination that way to help pick up where you left off. So I always look for key values as well to help and take screen prints. Don't go ahead and take screen prints, uh, screen prints for that. And you can kind of extrapolate that these are the same type things. Look, we got the 128, 128, two same values. If you look over here, they both end. One ends in eight, one ends in zero. Let's go take a look at these. Let me uh, control Z back a little bit and take those marks off. And if you take a look at this 30 right here, if, I don't know if you can see it, but that ends in 8, that ends in 0, right here. This ends in 0, that ends in 8, same value. So you can see a pattern. Even though those aren't the same values, you can tell those are the same type addresses holding whatever those values, whatever it's controlling. It has nothing to do with us right now, but you can see those are basically the same type things and you can pick up where you left off using those type methods as well so I recommend you go do if it ends in C and you only see a couple of C's then just try your C's next time you bring it up if it crashes on you then go try the fours next go try the eights next and and, and like that and just do like a couple at a time you know and remember what it was next to if these are popping up a lot you know remember what it was next to was it a small value or a big value you know and take a screen print and look look for similarities like that that'll really help you out in weeding out the next time around and not re-hitting something that may crash the game again so keep that in mind that being said we're going to go try the fours this time we're going to just do all the fours now we know that this is our display code i've already moved it down don't know why i did it again and let's go and hit all our fours because we only had like a couple of them with the display code so we only got we only got two of them and we're looking for any one of these that affects our chamber round value okay so we're going to file for round if it just doesn't count down, if it freezes or changes to a weird number, we know we have found the internal code. And take a look, it went straight to zero. Only when we froze that value. This one right here was not frozen, even though it did go to zero. That may have some effect on it, but that's not the internal code. Because we did not freeze that one. So let's see what happens when, let's unfreeze it. Now remember, we still had five left in the chamber when we fired off around, so it should have went to four. So let's reload. Let's see if it makes us reload. I'm just going to fire off another round. If he automatically reloads, we know that's the internal code. And take a look. He automatically reloaded. We should have had four in there, and it went to zero. That is our internal code. Simple as that. So let's go ahead and find out what accesses this address. We can see something constantly right to it. And what I want to do is put a break and trace on it. I want to put a break and trace on it so I can check the registries. And if we need to go back in the call structure, we can do that. But I only want to do it in a place that is only either reading or writing when it fires the gun. Not something like this that's just constantly reading and writing. Because we won't we possibly won't get accurate information doing something that's being constantly written to or constantly being accessed. You always want to do it in an area that's only being accessed when you're doing a particular thing or whatever you're looking for. Okay, so let's see what pops up when we fire off a round. Okay, we have four opcodes pop up, four addresses with opcodes. What have, that's when we take away a bullet. Let's see if they all go up together. Okay, so we know that those opcodes are accessed and everything when we take off. Now let's see when it adds to our value. So I'm going to reload, manual reload. 
see what's affected there and only two of them were this one and this one so we know both of these are being accessed when it's taking away and adding to our value and we can look and see that whatever is on the right side of the comma is going to affect whatever is on the left side of the comma so the only thing that can be writing to it is this one right here we see our address on the right side in the others so this is the only one that's writing to it and the good thing is it's only being affected and affected every single time only when we fire the gun now we gotta do one more check let's see I'm gonna stop this we don't need that let's see if it's a shared op code so what I want to do is I want to click on it and I want to come down here find out what address this instruction accesses and if nothing else is you know being written to by that particular op code or pops up we know we don't have to do a conditional break and trace so let's do that and see how many addresses pop up and we only see one and take a look at this this is this is the value that's been encrypted and you see it is jumping all over the place big numbers small numbers big numbers again so we could not find that value at all if we had used let me go ahead and reload it I'm just gonna fire it down to you six because we're gonna need that in just a minute you can see we cannot use the increase decrease because it's jumping all over the place. That is the way it is with encrypted values. You can only find it with changed and unchanged. It's the loosest search. So let's go ahead and put our break and trace on it. And thanks to Stephen Chapman, I go ahead and mark these two as well. Uh, this will take a, uh, snapshots of the stack, and this also just skips over uh, irrelevant calls in the call structure. So we can just kind of skip over those, and it will only show us the call structures we need of when the gun is actually firing and taking away our value, and that's what we want. So no conditional break and traces are needed this go around. It's the only address being affected. Only happens when we fire the gun. So we're going to fire the gun, and it's going to go through its call structure. So let's fire the gun. And there it is, going through the call structures, all the way to where it writes to our internal code. There we go. So let's go ahead and expand all. And we want to go ahead and click on the opcode. It's the same opcode as you see right here and right here that we put it on that'll always be it and let's just kind of take a look before we get started and see we know XMMO is writing to our value but it's already been encrypted so it's just some funky number okay let's see if anything is interesting over here in our registries remember what we said about registries Reg registries are just containers holding a value they can be utilized that they will never change unless the script or the opcode tells them to. So while they're holding a value and they're not being utilized, they're going to continue holding that value. Okay? And we take a look. We know we have five in the chamber right now. Let's go just be sure. We got five. And take a look at this. At R12, number five. Could that possibly be our normal chamber value? Well, let's put it to the test. And now that we got our tracer information, we can actually restart the game to give ourselves more bullets, and this will all still be the same. And remember what we said about the call structures. If you're unfamiliar with the break and trace screen, call structures, when we fired off a round, these are the call structures that firing off a round goes through, and they could be different things. They could be the sound effect for one. They could be uh, doing the math you know to take away or encrypting or whatever they could be many things we don't really know what they're doing uh, they could be you know the puff of smoke that you see come out of the gun or the, or the little fire burst or whatever you know each one of these things is handling something about that that gunshot okay and then we know one of them is our chamber value and possibly our inventory value if that, if that got utilized and we know it's writing it comes all the way down to where it writes to our internal chamber value which is encrypted and we're interested in R12 we're going to restart the game so we can give ourselves some more bullets and take a look at things so we're going to put R12 to the test and see if that may be our registry holding our regular value you won't always find it this way sometimes you'll have to do lots of back traces on down this call structure 
over here to find that. But these are the things you want to look for when you're going back in the call structure. You want to look for that value. What's holding that value? Somewhere in this call structure, that value is going to be held somewhere. And something's going to push it onto the stack. Something's going to be encrypting it. But somewhere you're going to be dealing with your normal value. And that's what you'll be looking for when you do this backtracing. You're looking for your normal value. And I, we may have found it right off the bat. It looks like it's just holding it. So let's put it to the test. We're going to do another break and trace. We're going to move this break and trace over here so we can compare it in just a moment. We should start off with seven more bullets. And let's go ahead and put a break and trace on it. A new one. Just move it over here out of the way. And yeah, I know I make a mess on the screen, but that's just the way I operate. Let's bring our gun up. And you see we start with seven bullets. So when we do the break and trace this time, we want to see a six in that R12. So will, will it have a six? Well, let's see. And now it writes to our value. Okay, let's go down and expand all. And it breaks down our call structure from the beginning to the end and then back to the beginning again. Because that's how it'll run. Calls run like this. It starts here, hits hits a call, jumps to this one, runs till it hits another call, and so on and so forth, till it gets to here. It's a return, then it starts going back up the tree until it hits a return. And what it does it'll always if you hit a call somewhere it will put the next address onto the stack so when it hits a return it knows where to return to if i go back to this one right here there'll be a call before it or somewhere before it and it knows to come back to this address a jump is a little bit different a jump will just go to there and it won't come back unless you tell it to in another instruction but a call will always look for a return and it's looking to come back to this address so I hope that made sense. But let's get back to what I'm getting off topic here. All right. So let's take a look. The first time we had five, we restarted the game. We did a break and trace on that same opcode in R12. Guess what it's holding? But let's not trust that. Let's just do it one more time just for clarification. Okay. And let's get it to, uh, I say, let's just pick a random number. Let's pick three. So let's fire one more time. So the next time we fire, it'll be a three. Okay, so let's go back to our opcode. We'll double click on it and we'll put one more break and trace on it, just like that. And if it is, we don't have to go back in the call structure, we can just follow that R12. So if it's three this time, we know we found the registry that's holding our real value. Boom, three. All right, here's our new break and trace. Expand all. Let's hit it. Ah, take a look at R12. See that? Let's bring this over. R12.6 from the last time. And R5 for the first time. So each one has been right on the money with our chamber value. R12 is holding our normal chamber value. Somewhere up this script, it's being encrypted. We know somehow it's right into XMMO. And if we look right above it, RBP which is a base pointer, so that's the stack, is moving the encrypted value into XMMO. So something is moving that into RBP minus 30. So let's go up here and see if we see that. Well, that's some type of a byte pointer moving the ECX, but the value's already in there, so that's not really going to help us. We want to see something where RBP is on the left side of the comma. That's what we're looking for. So let's go on up. And we know R12 has to be doing it somewhere. So let's look for RBP minus 30. Minus 30. Let's go on up. Go on up. Ah, take a look at this. And take a look at what's writing to it. RBP minus 30, R12. We see right above it. Take a look. R12 is moving into EAX. It's being XORed. R12 is storing the value. And we know R12 right here is holding our normal value. Okay. So just out of curiosity, we see R12 writing into EAX. R12 is holding our normal value all the way down to where it's been encrypted. It's still holding our normal value. It's being encrypted right here. So it's moving uh, a 5 into there, being encrypted. And now it's writing this to RBP minus 30. 
eventually it comes down to XMMO. XMMO is writing to our internal code. So what happens if we change R12 to like 99 before it writes it to EAX and before it's encrypted with this little value right here? Let's find out. Let's do a AOB injection right there. We'll just put that as MO1. Oops, I mashed the wrong button. Sorry about that. There we go. And all we're going to do is we're just going to use R12. I know it says R12L, the lower bits of R12, but it doesn't matter because we're putting 99 in there. That's the hex. 63 is 99 in hex. Or we can do it like this. I don't want to confuse anybody. That And the pound sign means decimal 99, which is a base 10. So let's assign that to the current cheat table. We'll put ammo chamber test just for our notes. Let's go ahead and click it. And hopefully that will be where it's being encrypted at or the start of its encryption. Looks like it's still going through some encryption on down the list here. But let's just take a look and see what's happening with it. And take a look. We found the beginning of where it's been encrypted. It was just on up the page. So we did not have to go back in the call structure at all. We can further test this by unticking it. And it should just count down from 99. And if it does, we found her. So that's why it really helps to understand assembly. And understand what you're looking at. Pay attention to these registries. And like I say, when you're looking for encrypted values and anything, something somewhere down the call structure will be holding your correct value. It may not be in this particular, like it was here. You may not see it right off the bat. You may have to go back further in the call structure, but you're looking for your value that you're wanting to find. Somewhere you will see it in one of these particular registries. So keep that in mind. You're always looking for your normal value because you're finding where it is before it gets encrypted. That's how you do it. So hopefully you learned a couple of things about, you know, a little bit deeper about break and trace. But the one main thing, if you got anything out of this, is how to continue where you left off when you are searching for unknown values and it's crashing your game a lot. And that way you're not, this will help minimize the chance of you re-hitting that same top thing that's crashing your game. So keep that in mind, and I hope that helped you. Okay, guys. Well, I do hope this helped you. I hope you got something out of it. Now, I know it's uh, a boring thing to look up encrypted values. I, it, it's not something really fun to do, but it's fun to find once you do find it and everything. Once you do, you feel like you really accomplished something. But, you know, keep these little techniques in mind. Go try your zeros, then go try your fours, then go try your eights. That will really help you keep up with what you've already done so you're not just not crashing the game over and over and over again and just not finding it. Because these addresses that you're finding over here in this column, they are the same type values you've already tried. They're just basically different addresses. The addresses have changed, but usually the endings will still be the same based on the offsets and everything. So that will help you uh, weed these out a lot better and keep you from crashing the game so much and just losing where you are and just never finding it. Okay, so uh, try to keep that in mind. Come join us over at the Facebook channel. We got a bunch of game hackers that hang out there and they will be happy to answer your questions. We do not teach how to hack online games. I get a lot of questions in regards to that, but I do not hack online games and uh, there's a completely different beast, so I just don't do it. But, you know, these techniques that I show, if uh, values are stored on your computers and the server happens to accept it, hey, that's their problem, not mine. So, these techniques do work for online games if the values are stored on your computer. So, there's no difference. But if they are stored on the server, uh, you're on God's good humor then because I ain't got a clue how to hack server-sided values. So, it's not something I ever really care to learn nor will care to learn. So, keep that in mind when you're asking your questions. I'm not going to hack online games, okay? But I really appreciate all you guys' support and everything. YouTube has been demonetizing my videos. They've been demonetizing Steven videos for no reason just because we're hacking games and teaching how to hack games. And they're not reinstating them. So it's just been really 
down you know on that but i but i do this for you guys and i really appreciate all the support and everything i also want to thank my partners and uh i really could use all the help uh, you guys can give you know if you can donate a dollar a month to help us out help me out here that would be great i'd be able to concentrate on doing more vids and more tuts and, and really getting into the meat of them there's so much more i want to show you that i've learned and everything it's hard for me to find the time to and uh if you can donate a dollar a month, that would be wonderful. I would greatly appreciate it. I would love you forever. So go check out the Patreon. And we're going to have contests in the future and everything once we get the website up and running. And uh, I want you guys to be a part of that as well. And I'll let you know some updates on the website. It's going to be coming out very, very soon. Hopefully within the week or so. So I'll keep you updated on that. But thank you guys so much. And come join us. Uh, just know one thing, like always, you guys take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because Blue doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care now. Demonetize this, YouTube. Blue the brains out. Ha, 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 ha.